if there's a game that can define what the 90s was like, then I think Twisted Metal might be a good representation of that. Today I'm going to be telling you whether I think Twisted Metal is a good buy or something you should probably stay away from and just keep it in your memory so it doesn't completely ruin your childhood. Now it's only a $10 game, but still, nostalgia works like that. You see something you had a great time with as a kid, then you play it and you're like, man, this game really sucks. So that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you. If this video does help you or entertain you or whatever, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit your notifications so you never miss a video from me. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, first off, the story is pretty simple, like the rest of the game, except there's things hidden everywhere. And so essentially the story is Calypso comes up with this tournament. These drivers fight to the death. And it's kind of like the uh, maybe like the original Battle Royale. I never really thought about it like that. And so I said it out loud. But there you go. That's kind of cool. You fight over several different arenas around the world. And whoever the winner is will get one wish granted to them from Calypso, but typically he's going to turn it around on you. You have bosses in the game, so you have Sweet Tooth, Minion, and Dark Tooth, all of which can be unlocked once you actually beat those characters in the game, or you could simply Google it and type in the unlock code. There's five things I want to focus on here to see if this game is worth it. The first we're going to talk about is combat. So the combat in the game on its surface is actually pretty simple. You pick up missiles, Homing missiles, power missiles, fire missiles, uh, you know, lightning strikes, napalm, and you shoot it at other players trying to kill them, you know, and take their health away. So pretty simple, right? You also have machine guns attached to each vehicle, and each character has their own special ability uh, once you get that powered up. But this is a big but. You have special codes you can put in the game. So left, right, up will actually be a freeze mechanic, which is super helpful because once you freeze somebody, you can spam your all of your weapons over and over and over and typically with one or two freezes actually kill that car entirely. You can do a homing napalm. You can go invisible. There's actually a shield that you can get, none of which is explained in the game. And so I'm surprised I even figured this stuff out back in the day because we didn't really have Google back then. This game came out in 96, by the way. Um, so you just had to figure it out by trial and error back then. But either way, those parts of the combat are super important in the game. Then you have the movement. And so I let my 12-year-old son play this game to get his reaction, to see if he would have the same reaction as me. Granted, he grew up with the PS4 and a PS5. You know what I mean? I think the very first system I ever had in this house was a 360. So, you know, you know, their experience, my kids' experience is way different than what mine was. You know, 16-bit systems and even 8-bit systems were kind of the norm then. Here's his reaction, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes in. This game is janky. You don't like it? Like the controls? Yes. Yeah. And I think that pretty much nails it. The movement is janky. When you first start this game, you don't realize how fast you're going. So everything is going super quick. And then the movement, it almost feels like you are moving way too quickly in the game. And there's like input lag, but then sometimes you overcorrect. So it almost feels like you're putting either not enough or too much stick input and it's a constant battle throughout the game yeah so just expect to die a lot when you're trying to move and you're trying to get to uh uh you know one of the health icons because you're down to a sliver and you've passed it like 10 times and you're just trying to inch towards it and then all of a sudden a missile or something kills you right before you get it i actually find it easier to play with some of the slower characters so hammerhead the monster truck mr slam are actually easier characters I think to start out with and you know Warthog is actually a good one as well. So the movement can be a little janky for sure when you get to a map like New York City or Antarctica make sure you pay attention to the rooftops especially in tournament mode where you only have so many lives because you will end up on the ground and you'll see the buildings and how the PlayStation 1 
how poorly it handled buildings. They'll be all wonky and like separating and stuff, but it, just be very careful on those maps. I'd actually recommend playing individual uh, maps with those or local uh, games first on those so you get an idea because the last thing you want to do is be in tournament mode um, and, you know, end up falling off a, a freaking rooftop, you know, three times and boom, you're done. So what about the graphics? I don't know that I see anything really wrong with it considering that it came out in 96. Um, I had heard or I actually read some complaints when I was looking up some of the reviews from back then uh, that it wasn't as good as what it could be. And what that entails, I have no idea. But all I know is that for a game this old, um, I, I, I just I don't think it looks terrible. You know what I mean? It kind of gets a pass there because you can still pretty much make out everything that's going on. Besides those weird issues, again, with the buildings and how they're separating and all that kind of stuff. Now, that that is kind of weird to me. How about the replayability of the game? I don't think it would be nearly as high if the game wasn't so challenging, and it is. So you almost feel like you have a cheat code when you put in to play as Minion until you play as Minion, and you realize the game is still just as difficult. He has a better special ability than pretty much anybody in the game, but it's still very difficult. And so I think that gives this game actually a good amount of playability. Those wonky controls we were talking about and trying to figure out everything with this game makes it playable, right? I spent three and a half or four hours with this game, which is pretty good considering this is a 27-year-old game. And I don't mind saying no to nostalgia, so it's not like I'm like, oh my god, I'm the biggest Twisted Metal fan in the world. Even though I was a huge fan of this game, I would have had no qualms about just putting this game down after 10 minutes if it really sucked that bad. Matter of fact, you probably wouldn't be seeing this review if that was the case because I couldn't even tell you anything about the game. But I will say, because it is it is very difficult, it, I say very difficult, it's, it is fairly difficult and challenging, that actually makes the playability of this game 100 times better in my opinion. And then the last thing that we're going to use is the fun factor. How fun is it? Because we weren't depending upon amazing graphics, even though they looked good to us at the time, and we wondered how could these things get any better, they obviously have, but that wasn't the main focus back then, right? Not from what I remember, the main focus was, is the game fun? And so, can I still say the game is fun? Uh, it's okay. It's not bad. It's not like I would sit here and play it 100 hours, uh, but at the same time, I thought it was pretty decent. Now, if I was able to just run through the game and beat it within an hour, then no, I, I think, you know, no, there's no way. And so you can spend some time in this game, you know, maybe five, six hours, maybe even up to 10 hours. I don't know, uh, depending on, you know, if you're a completionist or not, maybe it'll take a little bit longer, you know, but I think the way the tournament is set up, you only having three lives. Uh, is actually a uh, pretty good challenge for you to go through and try to complete. So all in all, would I say buy this game or skip out on it? I'd say for 10 bucks, it's actually pretty good. Now, again, I asked my 12-year-old son, I said, hey, obviously, you know, trying to, I guess, look past some of the things that you think kind of suck about the game, like the graphics and the movement and all that, what do you think? He wasn't digging it. That's kind of to be expected, though, when you grow up, with really good graphics in PS4s and PS5s. It just kind of is what it is. I say for 10 bucks, this game is worth buying. Funny enough, there's actually a TV series coming out with Twisted Metal. It's got Nev Campbell from Scream in there. Uh, so that may be want something you want to check out as well. So I'd love to know what your experience is with. Did you buy this when you saw it in the PlayStation Store like I did? Do you think it's as fun? What do you think the issues and the good things with the game are? as you see it today, although battling cars and all that isn't nearly as popular as what it used to be, this is still a classic title. Thank you guys, see you in the next one, and as always, hold them down.